What's going on beautiful people? Today I'm gonna to be breaking down this tank and doing something completely different to what I usually do. There's a good reason for it and I'll explain. So before I get onto that, every tank you can see, look, has got absolutely amazing plant growth. Everything doing fantastic. I mean, we've even got stuff growing at the top. Great plant growth, great plant growth. Again, ridiculous, crazy, crazy at the top as well. Rainbow fish tank, absolutely nuts. I mean, even my blackwater scape has got really good plant growth. So then what is going on with this tank here? There's no sort of pop to the plants. They've got like a weird sort of algae on them, kind of diatomy. Yeah, I don't think diatomy is a verb, but we'll go, we'll go with that. So why is this tank struggling? The reason being, I put these sort of concrete dividers to raise it up the terrace when I built it. Now they are leaching pH constantly. It settles, it doesn't go crazy high, it goes to eight. My tap water seven, and at seven with a little bit of bog wood and things like that, brings it down a little, a touch, 6.8, that sort of area, we get amazing plant growth. But with this one, it's staying at eight. I do a water change, next day it stays at eight. The mistake I made was not sealing the concrete. I literally cut it up and put it in water for like eight days or something like that. Now I was told that that would uh, release a lot of the pH, but I guess not enough for an aquarium. So up here on the, uh, the shrimp owls, I completely encased the whole concrete shape that I bought from Ikea with like a resin, so it's all sealed completely. And that is perfect. It's even got some little baby fishies in there as well that I haven't got a clue what they are. So yeah, mistake made with this one, but it's cool. I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna do something that I've been inspired to do by Aquarium Design Group. So amongst other things, Aquarium Design Group are quite famous for their hardscape only tanks. It's not something I really do because I love plants, but you know, I wanna switch it up a bit, get my skills a bit better. I usually rely heavily on the plants to balance out the aquarium. So I wanna see if I can do it without having a ton of plants, get the lighting just right, and just go for something really cool and impactful. The good thing is the fish in here are so vibrant, so they'll look immense against like a real dulled, if you like, hardscape, you know, just wood, rocks, no brightly colored plants. I mean, that's gonna make the, the fish stand out amazingly. So I had a good conversation with Jeff Sensky recently, and it's really, really inspired me to give this type of uh, aquarium a go. And I'm gonna do my absolute best to not plant it or plant it very minimally. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Gotta put a little bit of plants in, surely. But more for a detail, like an added detail, rather than me using the plants as a tool so I don't actually have to do anything. But then if I get the balance just right, I shouldn't have to anyway. And I'm a very lazy fish keeper. I don't wanna spend so much time each week. For me, that's not what keeping fish and having fish tanks is about. They're supposed to be beautiful things, not taxing chores that you just dread. First job though, is to get this whole thing cleared out. Very simple, I'm just gonna put all of the fish in a bucket, they'll be fine whilst we're doing this. Clear everything out, clean all the sides. I'll get the filter clean as well. And then we can get started. So that is everything nice and clean now. I've uh, put the filter to the side. The internal cartridges, which hold all the sort of biological media, I've actually put them down in the bucket with the fish. So that'll be absolutely fine for the duration of the build. Now I wanna go for that sort of really super clean look. So I'm gonna remove the background of black. It, it tends to look better in these when you do just completely clear. I don't know, I think it's gonna make everything else stand out a lot better. Okay, that's very clean. Um, although this Superfish light is absolutely brilliant for, for growing plants, we've seen that on so many tanks. Like it's growing all of these plants without a filter at all. There's two of them on this tank, um, one for the background, one for the foreground and yet yeah, growing great. And also all the reds on this tank as well. But you do actually get a much better shimmering effect when you use a spotlight. So I'm gonna switch it out for that. The ADG gallery, there's a lot of spotlights and the shimmer. The shimmer just looks so good in these simplistic style, sort of modern looking aquariums. There we go, look, look at all of that shimmery goodness. So they've got the downward light and then you've got an outlet causing like ripples and it just, yeah, it looks so good. So yeah, let's swap this one out. So I really didn't like the wire coming down the back. It was completely spoiling that clean look. So I've just put it directly horizontal and then it runs down with the rest of the wires. Much cleaner. So now it's time to move on to the hardscape. Now, usually with a planting tank, I can be a little bit free with it because I'm gonna put plants all over it anyway and by the time they've grown in, you're not even gonna see it. But in this one, the hardscape is everything. I'm just gonna take my time with it. Rocks, wood, sand, that's it. But like, I want something very sort of 
punchy and dramatic really is the word I'm looking for. Now being a cube tank, I think an island is gonna work best, coming from the center and sort of maybe a couple of pieces coming off to the edges as well. And I've got a lot of cool pieces sort of dotted around, but these are absolutely huge. So I guess we should go over to the shop. I call this the shop, it's not a shop, it's a racking system with a ton of wood and rocks on, but you know, for me, it's my shop. We've got some really nice sort of manzanita here. Some more up here as well, that, that could work brilliantly. This is a very cool piece. Oh, I'm just gonna start getting stuff in. Oh, there's more up there as well. Oh, I'm just gonna get stuff in and then just see how it goes. Yeah, I think that's the main focal piece. I need to prop some rocks behind it as well, just to lift it off a little bit, because I think if it stood upright a bit more, it'll look even better. Yeah, there we go. That is what I'm talking about. Looking good, stylish, isn't it? So whenever you get hardscape for a hardscape only tank, you really do want to oversize. You want bits coming out, preferably. You don't have to if you've got a lidded tank, but make sure they fill a really, really good area. So now we want to add character to the bottom area and place some more rocks around it all. I might put some on top as well, just to lock it down. I'll probably glue a couple of points as well, just because that's going to float otherwise. Yeah, I'm liking that so far. Very, very simple. I love rounded pebbles with hard wood. I, I don't know why, I just think that it works really well together. I will have sand obviously in here as well. Not yet though, I just wanna glue some contact points there and then a couple on this side just to make sure that, that wood doesn't float. Just use cyanoacrylate super glue. I'm gonna use the gel for this one because I don't need a lot. So it's gonna be unnoticeable then. Oh yes, loving that. It's absolutely solid now. Tap, test, tap, 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 not moving anywhere. So now we can get our sand in, a light colored sand against these sort of darker rocks and they will be darker when they're wet. They look kind of gray now, but they'll be much darker than that. A light sand is gonna add really good contrast, I think. And then on top of that, I can put some more detail if I want. I might even keep it just, just like that. See how it goes after the sand is down. Yeah, I think I actually really like it. It's just like that. This could work so well. Um, I'm, I've got a slightly coarser version of exactly the same sand. Well, it's kind of like a coarse sand, fine gravel, if you like. Uh, but the next size up, I'll just put just in some of the edges, just a little bit more detail. I think we're there then. Okay, awesome. I love it. It's time to fill it up. Can you just see how good this is going to look though? All the lights off around it in a bit when I do like final shots. With the fish in, they're going to look crazy, unless they all hide. Um, green neons, they do, <laughs> they do hide a lot. I mean, if you look in there now, yeah, they're about to hide because we're pointing at them. I swear they know the camera sends like a infrared or so, I don't know. <laughs> Right, so we've filled up, that's great. I can prime the filter now. We can actually add fish pretty much straight away. Well, straight away, not pretty much, straight away, because this water is conditioned. If you look where it's coming from, it is in my water butt, which you can, I don't know if you can hear right now, but there's a hum going on. That is the, uh, fi fi not filter, a pump inside that's pumping all the water from this vat or water butt. We call it a water butt in the UK. Um, and that water's been sat maturing for ages. It's the room temperature as well. So I heat the room using that thing there, which looks like a manta ray or the front of like a dodge or something. I don't know. But yeah, that basically means fish can go straight in. Temperatures are good, no chlorine in it because I treated it. And yeah, they'll be perfect, just go straight in. But I have to add back in the cartridges and prime the filter first. Oh, 
Oh yes, that is the shimmer that we're talking about. Now the light is actually quite bright at the moment. It is dimmable. I'll leave a link for this in the description, by the way, guys, because you can get it in the US, you can get it in the UK. You must be able to get it in Europe as well. I'll leave links below, but it's quite bright for a tank that's got no lights. It, it will have algae at that level. Obviously for the demonstration and stuff, I'll keep it quite bright because it, it looks great on film, but there's a dimmer switch here and I can just, and I can just bring it down to whatever seems appropriate. Like, I mean, the camera will compensate. When you go low in light, it brightens it. So it'd probably be quite hard to see, but yeah, kind of necessary, I think. I've, I reckon you either do lower photo periods of like five hours with a bright light, or you can do like longer periods with a lower light. Anyway, we can now put our fish in, stop messing about. So I've collected up the fish and we can now put them in. We've got the dragon better here. We've got all of the green neons in here with three, is it? No, two auto sinkless. I'm gonna put the neons in first because I'm pretty sure they'll freak out there. They're such a timid fish. I mean, I'm surprised they're being so still now. It's quite a clever response actually. I think they stay still so that like predators think they're dead. <laughs> they're not, let's put them in. Here we go then. So I am expecting them to just pretty much hide straight away if they don't pretend they're dead. Well, that's a good amount there. Looking good. Okay, so initial floating around, like I say, to be expected, they're very, very cautious. Way more cautious than all the other Tetris, to be honest, like the Cardinals are nothing like it. Neons really, they're a lot less shy as well, but it's okay. And then next is our Dragon Better. Not shy at all. Kate absolutely, Kate, my wife that is, for those you who don't know, uh, she absolutely loves this fish. So for some of you might be worried about flow in the tank for the better. So I add this little lip on, it's like a plastic piece of the bottle. I'll put some clips up of how I made it as I'm talking, but uh, what that basically means is the water doesn't just keep going down and pushing everywhere into the aquarium. It flickers all over the surface, goes across the top, and by the time it hits the other side, it's, it's kind of diffused, but it works really well for that shimmer as well, doesn't it? Oh, I'm loving this. And if the neons could stay out like this, that would be absolutely great as well. So a massive thank you to Jeff from Aquarium Design Group for the inspiration for this tank. Now on the surface, it might look like such an easy thing to do, but because you're working with so few uh, different types of materials and you haven't got the plants to hide stuff with, it can be a little tricky to get things right. The beauty of it is, if you don't like what you've done, you can change it quite easy as well. Because you're not gonna be stirring up soil and putting organics into the water column, it's far easier to switch things around and not have to worry about algae. Now the main control of your algae in this tank is gonna be the lighting. That's why I went for this dimmable spotlight. It's just right for this size tank as well. If I was gonna do a four foot, I'd probably have two of them. I think it'd be all right for a two foot as well like a 20 gallon, that sort of size. So yeah, if you're thinking of giving something like this a go, I really, really urge you to. It's a great way actually of doing a beginner tank. Now, because you don't have a load of plants soaking up nitrite, nitrates and ammonia, you need to be testing your water daily. I'm gonna be okay because my filter's fully cycled, but just, just keep on top of things, keep checking your water like you should be, changing when needed and you should be golden.